Eva Stasiak is our guest. She lives in Toronto, born in Poland. Uh, the Winter Palace is her newest book, One, One to Come, or More to Come. I shouldn't just say one, but the amount of research you do, my goodness. Uh, so tell me about the protagonist in the book, uh, Barbara. Well, she is, as we know, a fictional character. However, mm -hmm. she is a composite of, of a number of mentions and, and characters that I encountered. I, I realized, uh, after reading Catherine's sentence uh, that I quote in the book, in which she says that she has three spies in the, in the bedroom of the emperors who are watching the emperors and, try, mm -hmm. and they will inform her when anything right. happens. You mean through holes in the wall? Well, they are in her entourage, so uh, obviously they, they, they are mm -hmm. probably... Uh, some confidence of, of Elizabeth, and right. maybe Elizabeth knows that they are double spies, maybe she, she doesn't. So I think that that triggered the whole idea for me. Who could these spies be? Mm -hmm. and, and when I started thinking about it, I started researching the whole idea of spying in, in, in the Russian court, and very many uh, diarists and, and biographers mention uh, that a lot of people were involved in it, you know. Yes. But the British ambassador is saying that everybody in the British embassy is, uh, our servants are spying and selling secrets, you uh -huh. know. So if anything happens that's important, he has to do it, sort of lock his secretary in the room and stand guard himself. I see. So the lowly one, she was the daughter of a Polish book binder and he had fallen onto hard times and so Varvara came yes, to the palace yes. and they put her in this awful job. That's right. Uh, and, her, she, and there's an opening uh, position because there's so, such a great need for spies that she mm -hmm. she gets uh, she, she gets offered that, that was job. Was that the chancellor that the offered chancellor, her the job? Yes. The chancellor yeah. who drinks the cherry vodka. <laughs> he and does. Then, then he gave cherry <laughs> vodka to her one night. That that's, wasn't that's so good. good. Well, he is a historical figure and he actually was a very good chancellor of Russia. So he's a real person. He is a real person and, and, uh, and, and a very, very good politician and therefore also a spy master uh, uh. of the court because he wants to know what's going on and uh, and also historically Chancellor Bastushev doesn't particularly want this Prussian princess uh, Sophie right. to 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 come to court and be powerful mm -hmm. so he wants her downfall at first and right. he employs Varvara to watch and to give him some some ammunition so that he could go and disgrace Catherine I see and to, so to she the never emperors. gets there and, but Varvara be befriends uh, uh, mm. the young princess and, How? and well she reads to her she is well first of all she watches her she's has, she's supposed to spy on her and she does you know she goes through all these secret corridors and peeks into through the peepholes mm -hmm. and 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 realizes that this Russian princess is actually a vulnerable girl of 14, a bit unsure at least in her imagination a little mm -hmm. bit unsure of herself and in need of friends and Catherine notices her, and she notices some interest, you know, because Varvara also appears with, with Elizabeth as one of her entourage, and befriends her, and she sort of makes her first move, you know, notices her and is kind to her and says to her, we are both mm -hmm. foreigners here, we are both, you know, outsiders. Yes. And, and I think that that captures Varvara's heart. And the moment she begins, she realizes that Catherine is this wonderful, uh, potential charismatic person and she decides to help her mm. and that's how the, the friendship begins um, and does it continue it continues until the end of the novel but you have to you know have th to there will there. be there we will won't be tell. <laughs> we won't tell there is mm -hmm. there is some surprise at the end yes. I'm sure always always and lots yes. of scandal and, and uh, of idiosyncrasies scandal. and things yes. like that yes. and and uh, I read I think uh, out of your notes that uh, she liked dogs, Catherine the Great. Very much. But she had a pet white squirrel. Yes, yes. Later, again, later in life. Right. She, she, and, and birds, a lot of, of mm -hmm. doves birds, and yes. But the interesting thing is that Elizabeth loved cats. So when we have the coup in the palace, it's not only the replacement of the politicians mm -hmm. and the courtiers. Mm -hmm. Cats have to go, and dogs are brought into the palace, which I, I found see. absolutely fascinating. Cats out, dogs in. It, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes, yes. But an imperial court, I can't even imagine, in these times, what it was like in those times. Well, from my research, I discovered very quickly that our sense of glamour and grandeur is one thing. It was there, but it was also mm -hmm. squalor and a lot of discomfort and drafty rooms and moldy walls and lots yeah. of rats. And mice lots droppings and, and rat dro droppings. Yes, yes, and most yes, of the staff yes, yes. spying on you. <laughs> spying on you were, were sleeping in, in terrible quarters. Right. Yes, 
and you know you could you were never alone it, whatever you said what could be used against you at any time mm. there were no safe places your only safety was the loyalty of someone who would offer you a you know friendship sure or love. was it about who you knew necessarily mm, because very much. not that they chop your head off but they might they might or you know for, for Sophie or Catherine you know she, it was either when she was still Sophie she could have just been sent back to mm -hmm. to to Anhalt's Therbs and everybody we will all forget about her so back to the lowly back to German, the lowly German prince dumb. prince when dumb. when she after she became the wife of the Emperor uh, then she could be ex you know put into a monastery or pushed away in other ways right so it was always dangerous it wasn't mm -hmm. a very you know mm -hmm. it, it was not uh, that such, such so easy to survive right. especially for a woman like Catherine who didn't come with her family connection exactly you know, she had to make her connections mm -hmm. and what made her great uh, I think that first of all, she never allowed anybody to call her Catherine the Great. You know, she was offered the title by by the Russian uh, Senate, and they mm -hmm. and she said no, mm -hmm. no. She said the, my, the posterity can call me great. I'm Catherine the Second. And and um, but what made her great, I think, was first of all, she offered Russia a period of unprecedented uh, prosperity, expanded Russian territory at the cost mm -hmm. of Poland and Turkey. And, and Ukraine, or so. So, for Russia, she was a marvelous empress, and and she also reformed Russia in many ways. You know, she carried through some reforms. Mm -hmm. She cared for education. She started the first school for for aristocratic girls, the Smolny Institute. She built hospitals. She built, you know, brought beautiful art. She took to Russia. She made sure the reputation of Russia in the West was mm. high. You know, she corresponded for years with uh, Voltaire and Diderot and sort of projected this enlightened Russia. Yeah, a bit of a visionary. Yes, a little bit of a yes, visionary. And she yes. took good care of the Jews. Did yes, she not, very Catherine much. the so Great? Well, she, she tr well when, she, uh, when Poland was partitioned, Russia inherited the, the Jewish mm -hmm. population. Before the partition of Poland, there were no Jews in right. Russia. So suddenly, Catherine inherited these new lands, you know, uh, and they were populated by Jews. And and she was a bit worried about how the rest of Russia would accept these uh, people of a different religion, different customs, and sort of uh, mm -hmm. self. So so she created the Pale of Settlement, which is actually they said, okay, the Jews can only settle in the Pale of Settlement, which was right. actually used to be Polish lands. Okay. So that's what they like. But that but she was very enlightened in the in the guarantees that she mm -hmm. gave. Uh, the, the, the Jewish community. Yes, this is a long way from one, one of your first books, uh, Necessary Lies. Very true. Very true. What was that one about? Well, it was about the city I, I was born in, Wrocław or Breslau, as it was known before the war. And, and it was kind of my first Canadian story because mm. when I came to Canada, I, I had to tell people where I was from. And, and, and uh, when I lived in Wrocław and, and knew about this kind of checkered Polish German past and the ruins, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't think it was very interesting. But here, it turned out to be sure, a fascinating Sure, absolutely. Story. But the purpose of historical fiction really is to cast light on modern day Russia, yes. to cast light on yes. what's going on today. If we yes. know, all, yes. I think we're always better at making judgments if we know what happened before. Yes, very much so. And a I think, little bit. I think Varvara would recognize the look in Putin's eyes. <laughs> I think so. The Putin will be the president, maybe not for long. We'll see. I think she would understand. Yeah. Well, thank you oh, so nice much. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Winter Palace, Eva Stashniak.